The Empire's update has been released on Arcane Odyssey. And you know what that means. Lots of new content has been added to both the Nimbus and Bronze Sea, mainly new islands to explore and enemies to fight. And also the, you know, Empire's part, like, the, uh, you could you could build stuff on islands, we'll get to that later. There's also new armor sets, offensive abilities, and miscellaneous stuff, and I'll be going through all of them that I know in this update. Also keep in mind, earlier footage I've recorded has me as a plasma conjurer, but I later switched to a mage because I felt the conjurer was weakened for me and mages seem to have the better side of this update, and also it just seems cooler in my opinion. Firstly, the islands. Lots of new islands with cool secrets and lore. For the Bronze Sea, there's six new islands. Technically five and one fortress, but I guess that would also still count as an island. We got Thrylos Crossing, Fort Castrum, Black Reach Island, Gloom Ruins, Cedar Arch, and Iero... Irokos. First try. Thrylos Crossing has two secrets in it, one being a drop filled with highly contaminated water that gives an extra infection debuff. The small room also has a kingdom's flag over it, at least I think it's from a kingdom, with a logo of an eye with lines radiating out of it. I don't know what kingdom this is, or if it, if it even is a kingdom. There's also a room with a skeleton of a dragon. The room is filled with a very deadly poison and does stupidly high damage over time. Fort Castrum is a new raid mini game thing or something, which the island itself has its own health bar. You need to shoot cannons at the fortress and damage it till the defenses are lowered. The fortress has 60,000 HP and lots of cannons and mortars. Once defeated, you can dock onto the island and prepare to fight 10 waves of ground forces for a reward. Each wave gets more difficult as you proceed, which feels like a given, and the 10th wave introduces a new boss. Once you defeated the boss, you can go inside the keep on top of the island and loot the treasury, which gives you modified gold and silver chests so you can open your inventory for items with the modifier that corresponds with the chest's modifier. <gasps> <coughs> there is also a secret in Fort Castrum, which is a note from King Calvus about orders for the boss of the fortress. Black Reach Island is a fairly big island, almost as big as the Forest of Cernano, that was the hideout slash labyrinth of a very dangerous pirate captain that wielded ancient lightning magic, who was killed in a blockade by the Grand Navy forces. The island has a maze with the pirate captain's skeleton in it, as well as a good amount of chests. There is two secrets on Black Reach Island. One of them being the snow on a wrecked ship, mainly talking about the days of uh, the Grand Navy trying to track down and destroy or defeat this pirate captain who wielded ancient lightning magic. It goes through all the details and how the pirate captain made this island basically its his labyrinth and they made a blockade and eventually killed him. He was gone. The second one of these secrets is an old man that you can find in this tavern. He is a storyteller, and he tells you a story. You can pause the video to read the dialogue if you want. The Gloam Ruins was another fortress under Wintervale's influence, destroyed by King Nero Caesar the Apocalypse Bringer Curse user, and grandfather of King Calvus. 
There's one secret on the island being a clothed skeleton with three bronze daggers stuck in it with a note on a table next to it. The note basically states things about the siege of Revenous forces and the fortress. There's also lots of mentions about the Boreas family. Nevero is a part of the family, and sadly the only part left. There is no secret that the game gives you on Cedar Arch, but there is this little thing that you can find that isn't really a secret, but it still is good to note. Down here in Cedar Arch, in this elevator shaft that is drowned in water, there's this little piece of stone that seems like a, uh, a little cheat sheet to a maze. Which maze? No idea. But it's a maze nonetheless. And on Iracos, there isn't really anything notable. It's just a normal island. There's no secrets that the game tells you there is. There there really isn't. And uh, all the stuff that you're seeing, this is uh, a clan from a friend who built all this. It's uh, nothing about the island itself. It's just the clan. It's a cool island, don't get me wrong. It's just nothing notable about it. Now in the Nimbus Sea, there's three new islands, two of which serve as bases for the Grand Navy and Assassin Syndicate. Shield Guard is a massive Grand Navy base that inhabits one of the new mini-bosses added in the game, and it's flooded with captains and lieutenants. It has no secrets, so it seems like it only serves as an island to fight the new boss. Macronaos is an island ran by wanted criminals, and a hideout for the Assassin Syndicate, which inhabits another mini-boss in the update. It also has a total of six secrets in the island, which can all be found in the ancient catacombs on the island. The first of which, in the catacombs itself, is a hidden room that you can get into by breaking a cracked wall. The room has a skeleton with a backpack and a note with some treasure next to it. The note talks about the skeleton, I think, being an explorer to the Thorn Empire, and went to this island for its riches, but starved in the collapsed cave due to incompetence. Next is the Ritual Chambers, which has a grate that you can open to the Abyss of Charon. The Ritual Chambers is a red room used for sacrifices. There's two paths in the room that leads to chests. The Abyss of Charon is a giant underground system with the most amount of secrets in the island. There is a flooded tunnel with toxic water that leads to a pile of treasure. That is a secret. There's also a tunnel of toxic water that leads to a deep hole that the water falls into. An overwhelming fear prevents you from going down, and a ghost tells you not to jump down if you value your life. There's also a big room with a teal environment similar to the souls you can see with Insanity 3. There's treasure you can loot in a corpse of a man with a hammer with runes engraved on it. There's also a unique item set you can collect from the skeleton in the Abyss of Charon. And lastly, there's Tide Cliff Isle which is a big spire-like island surrounded by lots of whirlpools. It was also made by my friend, King Chronicle. I just wanted to mention that. Hi, Cryo. There's one secret on the island, and it's these cool crystals in the water ravine. Now let's get on with, the, with one of the other big things, the new bosses. Evander the Mountain Breaker is a wandering mini-boss that you can encounter in the Bronze Sea on land or water. On the water, he can spawn if there is an active player in the server with 50,000 bounty or higher and a couple stars of notoriety, and will chase said player down on his ship. He spawns every two minutes after death. He is a level 100 hero with the Colossal Greatsword, a new weapon for warlords you can get from defeating him. The weapon has a unique ability called Colossal Cleave, I'll get into the details later. Then there's Rear Admiral Amelia, the level 410 oh, abomination! Yeah. Amelia is a Rear Admiral of the Grand Navy that has the lost magic gravity. 
Her abilities are ginormous and deal stupid high damage. So if possible, try to find some form of effective cover with a uh, area she's in. She has a 1 in 10 chance to drop her cloak that somehow becomes tarnished as soon as you get it. Yeah! 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 And its stats at level 140 is 14 power, 118 defense, and 21 intensity. It's not bad, but there's much better options. Then there's the level 320 Architect Callisty. A magic basic combat warlock. Like all magma warlocks, this one does insanely high damage. And he's also in an incredibly compact space, so it may be impossible to kill this guy legitimately. Luckily, there is an illegitimate way. There's windows that leads to the ocean behind him, and since he's magma, he's pretty easy to cheese in the water. He has a 1 in 10 chance to drop his cape, which at level 140 gives 19 power and 22 armor piercing. And I really like this cape, actually. It's really good for vanity. It looks really cool. Now for the boss on the Fort Castrum raid, General Valerie. Valerie is a menace to society, blessed by the powers of the sun itself. Not actually, it just feels like he is. Valerie uses the Lost Magic Heat, which is a mix of ash and fire, having a burn damage over time while leaving damaging clouds on inflicted terrain. Valerie consists of multiple moves, a Phoenix Blast, an Ultimate Art Blast, a Javelin Spell, Pulsar Spell, Cannon Spell, and a Surge Spell. General Valerie has a 1 in 4 chance of dropping 1 of 5 armor pieces, a chest plate, leggings, a helmet, pauldrons, and a mask. Each armor piece gives a set amount of power, intensity, and armor piercing. There's still more I need to talk about in this update, so I'm gonna just run through the big stuff and then the small details. Clans can now build on islands, they claim. That is also a big part of this update. They can build defenses to protect their land, and they can also make farms for a good amount of money. All builds with functions, like shops and farms, are run by castaways you save. There's a new ability from scrolls you can find. Array summons floating orbs that hovers behind you and shoot towards the enemy at an ungiven time. The cannon is a magic blast that phases through matter and can hit targets through walls. Also, editors know, uh, the cannon spell has been heavily nerfed on size. It usually- it is now no longer this big that you saw in that clip. It, it is much smaller, the, the AoE. Blitz is a fighting style ability that teleports the caster in the air in the direction their cursor is and drops down on the enemy if they're under them. Essentially, Minos Prime's move. Soaring Eagle is a dual weapons ability that launches the caster high into the air. It's basically just a leap. Colossal Cleave is a heavy weapons ability unique to the Colossal Greatsword that hits enemies with a huge AoE slash that passes through solid matter. There's new armor sets you can get exclusively from Treasure Charts and Dark Sealed Chests. Treasure Charts gives the Lost Envoy set, Lost Diplomat set, and the rusty set. I only have the helmet and the leggings for the rusty set, not the chest piece, but uh, it gives you a good idea of what it looks like. Dark Seal Chests gives the Deatris set, Sophragos set, and the Dromius set. Are these the names of people? Huh. These are weird names. Buildings now crumble when completely destroyed instead of disappearing, similarly to how it was in World of Magic. NPCs now make a blocking animation when they block or parry attacks. Originally there was no animation, they just stood there, and it just said they blocked the attacks. It was really dumb looking. Luck has completely changed. Instead of increasing the chances of getting rarer items, it increases the amount of items you can get from certain things. 
You can get more items from chests, sealed chests, treasure charts, fishing, and more. Meaning for like a singular sealed chest, instead of getting like one item, you get three. A new animation pack has been added, the fighter. I really like this pack a lot. Why? 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 Why, oh God! King, why? There's a new mist thing added in the far reaches of the Dark Sea called Hesse Essence? It's probably said differently. That allows you to change your first or second magic. So, normal file deleting for a different first magic. Stronger enemies like wanted criminals or high-ranking Grand Navy slash Assassin Syndicate NPCs now have their own boss bar. NPCs can now overcharge their abilities, taking longer to cast but making them much bigger and much stronger. Some magics got visual changes, most notably fire magic. Tech Level 80, a co-developer of Arcane Odyssey, now has their own custom magic, Arcturus. A red and purple lightning-like magic with stupidly high destructive power, an unknown amount of damage, and incredible speed. Similarly to Cataclysm, Arcturus can also destroy entire islands. The defense stat for armor has been nerfed, as in, any piece of armor that gives defense, now it doesn't give as much as it used to before the Empire's update. As reference, here's my Atlantean Armor Sunken Warrior Armor. Here's how much defense it gave before Empire's update. And here's how much it gave now. Nothing about it has changed, as in manually. The, only the defense stat has been lowered. That's it. And this goes for any piece of armor that is in the game that gives defense. What is, what is happening over there? Also, remember that time in my previous video about the power juggernaut where I said, I know for a fact that they're gonna nerf this in the next update. I was wrong. It turns out they only just fixed the uh, formula for the synergy between lightning and uh, bleeding, which is like fighting style for iron leg and uh, eagle patrimony. They fixed that formula, so it's now giving the actual 30% instead of a 40%, but power itself and the build itself was not affected at all. It's still completely usable, it's still broken. The most damage I now do is now like 842, but that's only like a 40 damage difference between the original highest in this video, which was 882. So I'm still really happy about that. And that's basically it. That's all the new things added in the Empire's update, to my knowledge. I hope you guys enjoyed this little rundown of basically everything. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below what you want me to review next on Arcan Odyssey. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.